Hello everyone, welcome back to a new YouTube channel and a spring focused wardrobe. So today I really want to talk about how to create a fail safe spring closet so that when you come to dressing it's very easy, easy to put together and it's essentially a kind of capsule wardrobe video but from the pieces that I found most useful over the years. So I'm going to do a bit of a look back down memory lane um, and show you some older pictures that I would still wear now, which basically means that if you're going to buy that piece, then you know it will have longevity in the future as well. So a lot of it won't come as any surprises, but I just want to kind of make that checklist for you so that you can come to it and know that if you have these staples, you can really easily pull together some great looks. So I think I've kind of got maybe about three of each category. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first category I'm going to be talking about is jackets. There's maybe about three different styles of jackets that I think would be really useful in your wardrobe. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, and this is where you come in and your lifestyle and what your preference is, but I think a longer kind of coat jacket or something that falls between the two is a really useful piece to have at this time of year. Now what I'll do is because I'm going to show you some of my older examples, I'll link some um, new versions around in case you want to shop kind of idea or the concept of it. So what I mean by a longer jacket, you could go down any of these routes, you could do two of them, you could do all of them if you wanted to. So I would suggest maybe a trench coat to have in your wardrobe. Obviously um, I couldn't have a spring and capsule wardrobe without the trench coat. Um, it is something I rely on constantly because I just think it feels quite cool, effortless, and it kind of works for pretty much everything in the daytime that you're going to. So trench coat, I think, should be up there. But then of course, it depends on your lifestyle. You may not think a trench coat suits your kind of life. So what else is there out there in terms of the longer coat? So I would say a quilted jacket can come in really handy. It doesn't need to be a really long one, maybe something kind of a bit hip length as well. Just a quilted um, lightweight kind of jacket that will keep you warm, keep you waterproof maybe, and still feel quite casual is a really useful piece in your wardrobe. Now I'm not saying you have to get a trench coat and a quilted coat, but I'm just saying maybe tailor this to your wardrobe. Hello. No, no, you can't sit on my white trousers. You like to sit next to my white trousers. So this is Otty, in case um, you've not been around for a while. He's gonna come and sit with me for a bit. He's a very sleepy puppy today. He's not really a puppy anymore. He's about 18, 19 months. But he loves sitting on my knee. Like, that's all he wants to do, is sit on my knee, especially when he's sleepy. So. Um, he can sit next to me, but I don't want him on these white trousers <laughs> with his black fur. So in terms of the final longer style of coat, I think a smart coat is quite a good option to go for if none of those other options suit you, or if you kind of feel like you need a bit more variety on your wardrobes in terms of outerwear. A long, smart, and slightly tailored coat that's not too heavy is a really nice spring transitional piece. I've got a couple from Pixie Market and Marcella London, and they just stand you in really good stead when the weather isn't really warm, you know, that transitional weather, but you still want a coat, but nothing too heavy and wintry, um, and that's where that comes in and it just makes your outfits feel a little bit smarter as well. You could be wearing something like a jogger set and the coat just makes it feel a lot more smart and pulled together. So that is another option in terms of longer coats. As I said, you can kind of adapt this to your life and your wardrobe, what you're maybe lacking in your wardrobe and feel like would be helpful um, or just the kind of piece out of that that would suit your wardrobe. Now, another option I would go for is a leather jacket. I have a few renditions of a leather jacket um, and I'm actually thinking of maybe getting a slightly more oversized version as well um, for this season. I love just a classic black biker jacket and I'll try and link some options below, but I really think that is a useful piece. It brings a bit of edge to your outfit and because it's spring, it's not really warm. I think that leather works really nicely, contrasted against those lighter spring-like pieces. I also have a brown leather jacket. <laughs> He's so desperate to get my <laughs> You sit there. I also have a brown leather jacket from Jane and Tash, which is really, really handy. It's like a bit more of a crop style. It's actually, I'd say, a bit more of a smarter style than the leather. Okay, we're gonna have to cover the trousers up. Come on then. <laughs> 
Good boy, there you go. So my Jane and Tash one is slightly smarter. It's a brown color as well. It doesn't have to be a black leather jacket. If you feel like you need a leather jacket in your wardrobe, but don't really like the heaviness of the black, then brown is a really nice option, especially in this style as well. And then my final piece for spring that I think is really useful is a light colored blazer. Going back through my pictures, it's something that keeps coming up year after year is this lighter shade of blazer. Maybe something like a kind of soft beigey green, something that will go with everything. You might be a bit more of a warm beige person, something like that, maybe an off-white. But I do think that lighter, slightly lighter colour, you might want to go for more of a khaki if you kind of have a bit of a busy lifestyle where stains maybe happen. Something that's not black. Something that brings a bit of life and lift to your wardrobe. But I do think a blazer comes in so handy at this time of year and then you can wear it throughout summer as well on those cooler days. So let's talk about bottoms now and I'm going to kickstart things with a midi to maxi skirt which obviously is a bit of a trend at the moment but these are things that I have had in my wardrobe. Again looking back through the years that I've worn on repeat through this time of year. At the minute it's absolutely freezing in England but I'm really hoping it will be skirt weather soon. I'm um, kind of manifesting my skirt weather through this video. But I have a long uh, denim version like an off-white. I also have have a faux leather version in a, like a whitey shade. You could do a denim maxi skirt, which are obviously all around at the minute, but then they are a classic piece too. And um, so I do think a midi skirt just brings a bit of something different to your wardrobe, but still feels casual and simple enough to make it work with lots of different things. And then you can dress it up and dress it down. So the next is maybe something you wouldn't expect as much, but maybe some striped or patterned trousers. I actually own both. And I found that last year in particular, this was something I really gravitated towards because it just gave a lift to those simple basics like my white t-shirts and blazers to have a pair of patterned or striped trousers. I got a striped blue pair um, and I wore them so much last year. And I also have um, a patterned silk pair from Asino. And I just found that they really jazz things up while still kind of feeling like my style especially the striped because it didn't feel too out there and too bold so it felt very very wearable um, and just brings a bit of something extra to your wardrobe next is a pair of jeans now I always say to go for the style that suits you not what's on trend you might like to go from mom jean a straight jean a dark wash a light wash a white wash if you want to something slouchier longer but just a good pair of jeans that you know you can rely on um, will always stand you in good stead at this time of year. And actually for me, I remember last year really relying, actually the year before, really relying on light denim in my spring wardrobe because it gives that warmth. You can still wear kind of trainers and denim so you still feel warm enough. But at the same time, it brings that lightness too. And then next are some wide leg trousers. I think maybe something in a black or a neutral. Again, it's lifestyle dependent here. You know, if you've got four kids under the age of five, then you're not going to want to wear neutral trousers so much. But um, I think, you know, a great pair of wide legs that suit you. Again, it doesn't have to be just one style of wide leg. You can get wide legs that are a bit slimmer fitting. You can get them that are slightly cropped, slightly longer, really wide legs, some that taper at the top and then go wider at the bottom. So again, find something that works for you. I do think this wider, looser style um, is pretty flattering on most people. Um, and just brings a bit of edge to your wardrobe while still feeling very classic and wearable. So in terms of tops, um, let's go in with some knitwear. Um, I'm going to start with a crew neck knit. Um, I'm all about a high neck knit in winter. That's pretty much all I wear, to be honest, in my day-to-day -day life. Um, but a crew neck, as it gets a bit warmer, is a perfect piece to transition you into the new season. And the beauty of this is you can kind of layer it up with t-shirts underneath to create the level of warmth that you want. And something that's not too bulky means you can layer it up with your trench coat, with your blazer, etc. cetera. Um, I've got a really good one from Philippa K. Our cat do them, cos do them. In really good fabrics, I think, is important. I do think you can tell a jumper that is poor quality fabric, um, so you might want to look for really nice wool cashmere blend something like that to really elevate your look if you get something in a neutral color you'll be wearing it on repeat which is exactly what I did with my Philippa K one 
all through spring and summer last year and actually all winter as well. And then finally for knitwear, I think a cardigan is a really nice piece. Maybe like a V-neck loose-ish cardigan. Again, those brands like Cos and Arquette are just go-tos for me um, in terms of good quality pieces from the high street. Um, and just again, something in a neutral, I would say, something that suits your wardrobe. You might want to go for a black version. It's just nice to have that layering option, then you can throw it over your shoulders. And also if you just want to be wearing something like a white t-shirt underneath a blazer, you can use your cardigan without actually showing the cardigan. Um, so you still have the t-shirt and blazer look, but you've still got that warmth. Next goes without saying is a white t-shirt. Arquette do my favorite ones. The heavyweight ones are so good. Um, and you know, I don't need to tell you why you need a white t-shirt. Next is a shirt, a good shirt. I don't care what it is. A striped one, a plain one, a blue one, a white one, a brown one, whatever. But a good quality shirt um, will really stand you in good stead. This one is from AMR London. It's so fab. It's like a dark gray stripe, which I don't actually have anything similar of, but it's a really beautiful piece. You can get good shirts from so many places with nothing underneath, do some great quality shirts. Sessi do really good quality if you're looking for more independent brands. Um, but then again, the high street have some great options too. And another tip, if you are shopping on the high street, things like um, M&S, but maybe look in the men's section also would be a great place to start. And the same with H&M, maybe go to the men's section. I just feel like they do shirts a little bit better than the women's section. And then finally, simple Similar kind of category is a denim shirt, but this is something again, through the years, looking back on all my pictures and kind of gathering this information together, a denim shirt is one that I come to time and time again. I've just filmed a reel on this, so it should already be on Instagram, at Lydia Jane Tomlinson, but um, I did kind of five essential spring wardrobe pieces and my denim shirt was on there because I just think they're so useful. Okay, let's talk final category. I'm going to lump shoes and accessories together. So I think loafers are really a good piece to have at the moment. Flatters do some really great loafers um, and I sometimes have a discount code for flattered. So keep an eye out again on Instagram for that. Um, places like Arquette do really good loafers. I mean, there's so many places that do um, good leather shoes that aren't crazy expensive, but you know will stand you in good stead and be really comfortable too. Cezanne have the best comfy loafers. They've got some really good off-white ones at the minute, but I do think whatever you choose, I think they will be so useful. I personally love the styling of things like smart loafers with casual jeans. I just think that works really nicely at this time of year. And then on shoes, um, some smart white trainers, um, classic white trainers, you can't go wrong. They go with everything, they're comfortable and they still keep your foot warm. And then finally, the ballet flats. I'm loving the ballet flats with the strap across at the moment, but you know, any kind of ballet flats look great. Again, with those kind of wide leg denim, things like that, um, I think looks cool. And also I think hopefully you will notice that through this video, in the pictures that are popping up and also just by talking about it, all of the pieces that I'm mentioning work well together and you'll see from the pictures that some things are popping up where I'll be wearing the trench coat with the jeans I'm talking about and the shirt I'm talking about and that kind of thing. So they all work and interchange really nicely and that's why this is a great capsule wardrobe and a springboard for the rest of your wardrobe. Then I would say a black or brown belt or maybe a tan as well. Let's throw a tan in there as well. Again, depending on your wardrobe, depending on your colors, you don't need all of these, but I do think a good belt that goes with your wardrobe, goes with the hardware that you wear. It could be silver, it could be gold, um, but something very versatile and wearable, not too thick, not too thin, will really have longevity throughout your spring wardrobe, your summer wardrobe, autumn and winter wardrobe. Some really good sunglasses, I think are so key to a good spring wardrobe. Um, as you know, I wear my sunglasses when it's dark. So um, I really find them such a good piece to elevate a look um, when you're kind of out and about doing things. I just feel like sunglasses make the outfit. Um, and I have a bit of a sunglasses addiction. I would say one of the best pairs I have um, are my Loewe brown ones. Uh, they're like a brown tortoise shell because they're kind of a statement. You really notice them, but they're very, very elegant, classic, timeless, and they go with everything but elevate all of these pieces that I've mentioned. Um, somebody said the other day, I've got a wardrobe full of basics, but I feel like it looks a bit boring. That is where your accessories come into play um, and can really change the whole way your outfit looks. 
there's so many days I get dressed and I've got quite a simple outfit on. I'm like, is this gonna work? Then I put the accessories on and I'm like, oh, actually, I love this outfit. So it's really in the accessories. And then that goes for jewelry as well. Jewelry, I think, is a really good one um, to add some personality into your wardrobe. You might be somebody who layers up lots of necklaces and lots of dainty jewelry, or you might be someone who wears a big, chunky, bold necklace. And just for example, imagine those two things with a simple white t-shirt would create different looks and different styles. and the, and different ways that people see you as well. So I do think jewelry is so important in your wardrobe all year round. What I would say finally, actually, I don't think I've got an example of this, but I think maybe something I'm going to start incorporating, maybe something like a silk scarf, just around the neck, you can use it around your bag. They were definitely something that I saw more and more last year. And I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of those silk scarves this year um, as we look more towards sustainability and kind of rewiring your pieces and restyling. I think things like those silk scarves are really gonna be having a moment to transform your wardrobe. So hopefully that has been useful for you. If it has, let me know um, by giving it a thumbs up. I don't know whether I'll do an actual capsule wardrobe video where I'm wearing the pieces because I just feel like this has covered it all. Um, but I will always do lots of pieces featuring my basics and featuring all those capsule wardrobe pieces worn in lots of different ways. So um, hopefully, like I said, this has been useful um, at the beginning of the season to help you have a little mental checklist of where to start basically and see what you've got in comparison to this list and see where the gaps are. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit the subscribe button. We're like now on 706,000 or something, which is just so insane. Um, I'm so grateful. So thank you so much if you've subscribed already. Really, really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.